let's talk about waste. We're here for that, right? Type that word into Google and you're going to get a lot of different results. Uh, what waste does the kidney remove? Um, are waste management drivers unionized? Uh, what waste can wastewater treatment take out? The lesson is simple. Uh, waste comes in a lot of different forms, but here's another way to approach this nebulous idea. Lean practices. Uh, they center on the idea that eight wastes are out there and they try to find all of these wastes. So in Lean's eyes, any waste is an action that doesn't add value for your customer. Um, that's the idea that we're going to cover here today. So uh, let's do introductions. Let's dive in. Um, Nick, uh, why don't you kick things off? Hi, my name is Nick Nowak. I'm a Senior Lean Solutions Project Manager. I've been with Fastenal for six years now, mainly with Lean Solutions, uh, and I'm out of the Cleveland, Ohio area. And Luke? Hey, good afternoon. My name is Luke Grazer. I'm a Director of Lean Solutions. I've been with Fastenal for about 16 years, and I'm based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Alicia? Thanks for having me today, everyone. Um, I'm super excited for today, and I'm a Lean Solutions Consultant with Fastenal typically covering the South Florida, Central Florida area. Um, I've been with the company for six years, but I've really enjoyed the past three years of my uh, supply chain consulting. So that's who we are. Uh, you can see that we have three experts and me, so I hope they can give you something good here. Let's dive in. Uh, Nick, I'm gonna pick on you first here again. Uh, you've been in a lot of different customer facilities. How do you define the different wastes that you see? You know, I think one really good overarching umbrella for us to really define waste for our customers by is any non-value added process or uh, time that they're spending in production that's not going towards that end product or towards their consumer. A lot of times we see that our customers are doing a lot uh, for their business and we understand the reason why it's, it's their bread and butter. They want to make money and we understand that very much so. But also we understand that not every customer is going to be a supply chain expert like fast and on with that. Sometimes our customers try to take on the responsibility of being the owner, sole proprietor and owner of their supply chain, which in some scenarios that makes sense. But in others, we really truly do feel that the supply chain is best given to industry experts such as us here at Fastenal. And with that, we allow our customers to focus all of that non-value added processes and steps back into their business to add value to their consumers and also to their production process. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. Uh, let's do a deeper dive into the eight wastes themselves. Uh, Luke, I'm going to turn to you for that. Does that sound okay? That sounds great, Kurt. I appreciate it. So, as are you going to throw up a graphic there? Oh, yeah, I am. I'm totally not a rookie, you guys. It's totally fine. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, as you can see on this graphic, we do have these categorized into the eight, what we call central waste to help fight downtime. Now, they do fit nicely into this, this downtime acronym, which we'll go through in just a little bit. But thinking of ways to Kurt's point earlier, let's change our thought process from trash cans, landfill tonnage, sewage. That's where my Google took me uh, to the functions that make up your supply chain. These eight categories, and I'm not going to go through each one of them, but are designed to help you understand the hidden opportunities within your supply chain that may be overlooked on a routine day to day basis. Simple questions like why, and, and Nick will get to this later in our uh, little webinar here, but um, just asking the question why on current state uh, you know, processes can go a long way. Why is our receiving building down the street from the assembly plant? Why do we record crib transactions on a piece of paper then enter them into an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the day? Why do we have to wait on a forklift driver to get off break before we can continue to do work? Those type of things um, obviously are a great starting point when looking at the different categories of the eight central ways. Um, now, there may be legitimate answers to why these things are, are the way they are, but unless you take the time to examine, to bring in a, a lean consultant and follow the, the flow of people, product, and paper, you'll never understand those true hidden opportunities that could exist. So, fast and all, specifically Lean Solutions, can help identify these opportunities through a total cost of ownership analysis. Lean experts come in, we take the time to collaborate with our customers to really understand that current state of the supply chain. From there, Fastenal identifies future state solutions and programs that can ultimately reduce or eliminate those non-value activities that you spoke on just a minute ago. How can Fastenal take, eliminate, reduce, or even take on the entire you know, task themselves, transfer of task 
so that the customer doesn't have to do those going forward in their supply chain. And, and ultimately, that's what we're trying to do with Fast and All. We're trying to identify these opportunities and really partner and leverage uh, what that looks like from a, a supply chain uh, standpoint. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, um, but don't throw it back to me because I want to ask you for an example. Can you can you give me one, one of those eight? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's look at inventory specifically for a moment. Inventory and supply chain, you know, historically can be a, a word that has a negative association. We are out of inventory or we have way too much inventory, right? You've probably heard that from, from someone at some point. Too little inventory increases the probability of downtime, as you're seeing there on the screen. But too much inventory can erode an organization's bottom line or profitability. Uh, so where is that sweet spot? I chose to touch on inventory for one main reason. It's right in front of our faces, both from a financial perspective, as well as a production floor square footage perspective. It's very visual. Different departments within an organization will have different goals when it aligns to inventory. Material managers never want to run out. Purchasers or, or supply chain may have budgets or things like that they must adhere to. So partnering or working with a company like Fastenal, we can definitely help find that sweet spot in the supply chain as it relates to inventory. Um, through solutions like Fastbin, Fastbin, Onsite, Fastenal.com, we can help create and drive programs that meet all stakeholder goals within your organization. For example, Fastbin and Fastbin approved min-max levels at the stocking locations to ensure you don't run out of inventory, but yet you're not overstocked. Right-sizing those bins for static reorder quantities and replenishment schedules help achieve this as well. On-site program, local stocking agreements for critical parts, consignment programs when Fastenal operates within the four walls of your facility. Those are, those are programs we put in place uh, for the on-site model. And then Fastenal.com, just-in-time inventory or spot buys or one-offs creating a program for things that can allow and give employees the ability to order things when they're needed, not just, uh, you know, stocking there on pallets and collecting dust time and time again. So in summary, there are a lot of opportunities that can impact inventory. It's just a matter of finding the right partner with the aligned goals. Okay. Um, Alicia, inventory is taken, but can you give me a different example? Definitely. Uh, motion is where I often experience a lot of opportunity for businesses to gain indirect cost savings that they don't realize, um, because this is including the reduction of unnecessary movement of their employees. So, for example, employees leaving their work cells or employees leaving their production area to simply go and retrieve product that's not stocked close enough to them in the proximity of where their work is being done. So items that are dispersed in a stock room or a tool crib, um, and that might be across the facility. Even leaving your area to find a supervisor because the item is out of stock. Um, and run out. This is contributing to non-essential employee movement um, throughout many different industries. Now, we can't eliminate the movement completely, but we can reduce it. So one of the best solutions that Fastenal has um, for reducing motion in many fields of implementation is point of use inventory. So when an employee has what they need, to complete their job and it's the closest to the point of use, whether it's a critical part or simply a low dollar value consumable, that time and money is saved simply with the redu reduction of the motion. Yeah, people still need to move. Funny how that works, but yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, Nick, I bet you can sense what's coming. You want to give me an example? Well, they took some really good uh, examples, so I'll have to kind of strike one up. But uh, one of the main ones I talk to our customers about is non-utilized talent. Uh, because here at Fastenal, our, our founder, Bob Curlin, wrote a book called The Power of Fastenal People because he truly believed the most valuable asset that Fastenal has is its workforce and its belief in its people. In the same way, you know, I get to experience a lot of different customers and industries when we go through and do a TCOA or walk through an implementation project uh, with them. And with that, I'm always amazed to see how much our customers invest in their employees just to have their employees not to do the job that they're paying them for. A good example of this, and you know, I think of an industry that's very, you know, high, highly utilized, but also a lot of licensing, uh, maybe even some unionization is, is a welder. For instance, let's say you have a welder on the production floor. Uh, they're working on a daily basis, and at the end of the day, one of the asks you have of them is to count whatever inventory they used and put in a requisition so that their uh, stockpile of inventory for the next day could then be replenished so they can get back to their value-added activities of producing parts for your uh, manufacturing process. 
In this instance, however, you're now paying that welder or that field technician not to do their job, but to manage the supply chain. And with that, we're not utilizing that talent very well. And that's the one thing that I like to do within this is not only do we improve the supply chain, but hopefully we improve, you know, your workers uh, outlook on what they do inside their job. They're no longer getting bogged, bogged down by these transactional tasks that really take them away from the main goal as to why will you bring them into your business. Okay, that makes perfect sense. When you brought up the welder, I wasn't exactly sure how tied in because I never think of non-utilized talent correctly, but that is an outstanding example. Thank you. Okay, I, and I think that sets the scene for us, I think. So let's push a little bit further here and cover what a supply chain can accomplish by using lean principles. Alicia, I feel like that's where the DMAIC method comes in. Is that right? Yeah, Kurt, thanks. So the DMAIC approach is a five-step method of Lean Six Sigma, and it really aims to improve the processes where the waste that we just mentioned is found. So starting with clearly defining the project, the problem, the goals, the scope, and being as specific as possible. Um, this is where the stakeholders, management support is determined, and this is to ensure a supportive culture for the lean improvements moving forward. Then when we move on to measure, this is where we're going to collect data, and it's going to be very important because the data will measure the current performance of the processes, and it'll also give you a baseline starting point on where the future improvements can actually be made. So the analyze phase will take that data that was collected during the measure phase, and it's going to determine what steps are non-value added. So here we utilize tools such as a 5Y analysis to identify the root cause of really where that problem is um, and how it's contributing to the waste. Then once the data is measured and analyzed, you'll be able to generate solutions that will most improve the processes. So by using a data-driven approach to selecting the solutions, that eliminates assumptions, especially when presenting your solutions to your internal stakeholders for approval. Um, this is also where the implementation of the new processes begin and where you really start to see the changes. From here, last but not least, you want to control the solutions and your improvements. Not only do we want to see the new processes be sustainable, we want to see them continuously improve. So we want to verify that all the goals are being achieved by comparing post data to the original baseline data that was measured. And this will be able to help us identify where the changes still need to be made if there are any. Kurt, you might be on mute there. Oh no, I can't hear you, Kurt. I am on mute because I was saying Demaic and asking if I'd actually said it correctly. And if I didn't, you should let me know. But instead, you couldn't hear anything. So that went well. Um, was I saying Demaic correctly? You yeah. got it. Okay, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Luke, uh, since you were so kind as to let me know that I was on mute, uh, could you probably give me a little bit more on this? I saw a 6S on the slide. Um, can you get into that and how we handle VMI setups? Uh, and if you can, can you give us like an example? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Kurt. So first and foremost, VMI setup, vendor managed inventory. Here at Fastenal, we like to refer to that as FMI, Fastenal Managed Inventory. And really, as it relates to 6S and then ultimately back to the, the eight central waste, 6S stands for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, sustain, and that ever elusive last S, safety. Um, so let's take a simple example here. Let's just say you've heard RFID. Let's just take an RFID rack that is at one pot, you know, one assembly cell in a factory. And let's just say it has 40 SKUs, 40 different parts of bolts, nuts, and washers. Let's follow this success steps one by one and truly understand how that relates to uh, identifying and eliminating waste in the process. Sort, only those 40 parts are on the rack. There's no other parts. There's no obsolete parts. There's no parts that are supplied by another system, another process. It's only those 40 parts in this. That way employees don't have to look. They're way more efficient of identifying and pulling that part and getting to work. Set in order. What's the most efficient way to organize these parts based on the organizational needs? Do you have internal part numbers? Does it make sense to put them in that order? Are folks used to uh, grabbing by commodity all the bolts in order? 
all the washers in order, all the nuts in order, or do they work off of build instructions where they may need the nut, the bolt, nut, and washer all together so it makes sense to organize those three together, right? So we understand that and how you order ultimately is going to reduce that waste in the process. Shine, keeping it clean, properly labeled, labels that can be read, labels that uh, direct employees of what part they need to get that goes into the product that they're working on. Shine. Standardize is the fourth S. Define the process. Who can retrieve it? How is it reordered? How is it replenished? Many times, Fastenal can take on most of those steps, but we need to create SOPs, standard operating procedures that clearly identify who's responsible for what and detail out that process. Sustain. Train and review the SOP. All new employees are, are trained. Hey, here is the process of, of retrieving inventory at this location. Um, and then making sure that those work instructions or the process is, is clearly uh, displayed or, or, or um, framed or whatnot there on the side of the rack. And then finally, safety. If you follow the first five, ultimately that's going to create a, uh, a safe environment for your employees with the reduction of workplace accidents. So Kurt, hopefully that's what you were looking for, a relatively simple concept, but ultimately there's a lot that goes into it. I actually have a mini follow-up for you. So you said shine, do you guys like go in and help with shine or is that something that you don't handle? We, we can do anything. Um, if, if the situation presents itself. Okay. But well, I'm going to hire you to come shine my garage workshop, Luke. So I'll be in touch about that one. No okay. big deal. We can, You're going to love that it. one all flying. Yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Um, I see a couple of you have already sent in some questions, uh, but we're just about to the Q&A. So if you have anything that you want to ask, go ahead and get those submitted. Uh, but we're basically saving the best for last here. Uh, Nick, what is something that people can do to identify wastes in their own facilities? Yep, and this is something that was near and near to my heart because I've attended webinars like this in the past. And, you know, after sitting here for 30 minutes to an hour, I feel, what can I do? Like, how does that actually apply to my day-to-day -day operation? How does this help me? Exactly. And so with that, you know, we looked back as to what's a process that our customers can go through uh, within their own facilities and, and carry out without us being present. Now, I would recommend getting us involved, which we'll get to here in a bit. But one of the processes I'm talking around is the 5Y analysis, which I think you're just about to pull up. Yeah. The 5Y analysis really is a root cause analysis. We're trying to understand the root cause to the problems within a certain process or supply chain, anything like that. Uh, and here's an example of the overarching problem that the customer identified. And then at, they asked why five times below that. I would say that sometimes people struggle, struggle to get from the fourth why to the fifth why, which is okay. But I would say at least get to that fourth why, uh, because if you don't, you might be missing the actual root cause to what the problem is. And here you can see that the solution isn't even redoing the whole process. The solution is just making sure that there's an improved system for the employees to go out and actually retrieve the data they're looking for. And a great example of this that we've identified in previous TCOAs uh, is I had a situation with a customer where they said, hey, I have my employees walking to the uh, crib two or three times a day to get pairs of gloves. And I have fastenal vending machines inside my facility. Why is this happening? That, you know, they should be right there. What, what's happening? And, you know, we set up that supply chain so that those employees would actually be able to get their gloves and everything that they should need for the day right whenever they clocked in. You know, right beside the time badge, they go type in their time badge number, clock in, they grab their uh, PPE uh, as they enter into the work, uh, work part of their day, uh, and they go off to do their value added tasks for the customer. However, we then understood that those production employees were coming back to the vending machines two or three times a day to grab the same pair of gloves that they had grabbed in the morning. Reason being was because those gloves actually weren't the right gloves to go into that process. Uh, we understood that there was actually a solution that the customer was working with, that those gloves would start wearing a lot faster as compared to a, a higher grade of glove that would last them throughout the day, if not the whole week. And so by asking five whys and not just saying, hey, we need to move these uh, vending machines closer to the point of use, we actually understood that, hey, this customer actually needs a different pair of gloves because that's what the problem is. It's not that the supply chain isn't set up properly. It's that the product within the supply chain is not fitting the need of our customers. And if we just take you know, the surface level symptom approach of trying to fix that, we can miss the root cause and it'll just show itself in different ways. And so the five Y analysis is a really good activity that if you're experiencing some issues or problems within your supply chain or within your business, 
make that your problem statement. Ask why it's happening. Okay, then what's the reason as to why it's happening? What's the reason supporting the reason? And then also, what are we doing to even solve the problem in the first place? Because most times, you're not the first person to come across a problem. It just it just happened to become the natural way of doing things. And sometimes it's really hard to overcome that status quo. But in Lean Six Sigma, we always try to make sure that we're improving the future state of our supply chains, because with that, we can then provide more efficiency to the overall production process of our customers. I see what you're getting at. It, it feels like a don't put a Band-Aid on a situation, because if you leave it there, it'll become a skin graft. Uh, just do the right thing. Do the right thing. Uh, Nick, I'm going to stick with you for a second here. Since this is a digital event, we obviously can't be giving out physical swag. So what kind of digital swag do we have for everyone? Yeah, and I know I love getting swag at different expos. If you guys came to the Fastenal Expo, I know a lot of our customers love to get that swag from us and our, our trusted suppliers and partners. Uh, but today we're actually going to be uh, sending out and follow up to this meeting uh, a digital version of what we just shared on our screen where it'll be blank as to where our customers can insert their problem statement and then have those five whys laid out and then the overarching solution that they can implement to fix that underlying root cause uh, that's causing all those issues that are bubbling up within the business. So that's some of the digital swag that we want to hand out uh, or send out to our customers in attendance to today's call because the last thing we want you to do is walk away from this webinar not feeling better prepared than you were walking into it. Also, I would challenge everybody, get a Lean Solutions or a Lean Six Sigma certified uh, practitioner involved inside of your business. We would love to understand how your supply chain works and how we could possibly improve that. If you talk to your local Fastenal representative, they will have the right contact information for you to get a hold of somebody like a Luke and Alicia or myself uh, to get involved inside of your business. Because again, we want to be here as a trusted partner and supplier of our customers, not somebody just work to work transactionally with, but somebody to work within a partnership. And what that means to us is it's walking alongside to make sure that both sides relationship are getting the best out of one another. And with that, we need to make sure that we're helping our customers uh, achieve their desired future state. I see what you're saying. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to touch on before we jump into the Q&A section? Because we're there. One thing the I would point is, out. Oh, we did have something. Go ahead. Yeah, I did, I did have something. One thing I will point out is that if our customers do look into Lean Six Sigma practices, um, you'll see that there's a difference between 6S and Six Sigma. 6S is that practical approach that Luke was talking about before. Six Sigma is more of a data analytics approach to lean efficiencies. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody on the call today or on, on the webinar knew that, hey, if there are two different 6S short terms that they might find, and there is a big difference between those two, but usually you'll see what Luke was talking around is it called uh, uh, 6S, and then what that data analytical approach will be is Six Sigma, which is a little bit more in the weeds. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure I saw the Six Sigma uh, icon on something else and called it 6S. So once again, proving you guys are the experts. Uh, thank you. Uh, we are there. We've reached the Q&A stage. Our producer already has a couple of questions apparently lined up for us here, uh, but don't hesitate to send in more as we get going through these. Uh, also, if you want to connect with any of our experts or myself, that'd be a bad idea on your part. Go ahead and reach out to us, add us on LinkedIn, and we'll start talking on there. Um, let's see who has the first question here. Uh, so this says, can lean reduce waste in the supply chain without compromising on delivery times? Anybody want to take that one first? Luke, you talked about inventory. I think this might be right up your alley. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oftentimes when we look into to that process, we, we actually find ways to increase or, or offer better delivery times. So I wouldn't say, you know, Looking at this from a lean principles approach, uh, definitely not compromising any type of delivery times or anything like that. We're, we're, the goal of this would be to increase those and bring in the right inventory at the right time uh, that's that's needed for the for your facility, your business. So, no, that would what, that's exactly what we would look to do would be to to better improve those lead times and those type of things. Cool. Uh, anything either of you want to add to that or you want another one? Should I hit you? Keep them coming, Kurt. Okay. Uh, Chance is asking, when looking at waste reduction or elimination in an assessment, 
what documentation is best used for handoff to a project management team to implement? Is there any other documentation beyond the five whys? I'll take the first stab at this. I'd say a process flow, mapping out the process flow of each of the steps in the supply chain is a great tool really to illustrate what's going on in the customer supply chain to the customer themselves. But also to your point, Chance, when um, if this is going in, within Fastenal from a consultative activity to an implementation in a project manager, that that flow chart really helps us out understand each and every step within the current process so that when we go to look at implementing solution, Fastenal solutions and programs, we make sure and address each of those current steps to find out whether we can eliminate it, we can reduce it, or we can transfer that ownership to someone else. So I would say that's a great tool that we use internally um, and, uh, and externally when given that opportunity. Okay. Yeah, to piggyback off Luke too, I think um, the project harder is really important as well. Um, when we talk about defining the project, defining the problem, um, coming together and understanding what the goals are for that project management team and a clearly defined scope all of that's going to be really important to passing it on to that project team, making sure all the internal stakeholders are on the same page, management is supporting it, and that project charter is going to be a really good documentation for it. I would imagine that project scope is important because like any project, scope creep is a real thing and you want to try to keep a handle on it as much as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Nick is asking, do, uh, does Fastenal offer solutions to help an organization with speeding up lean maturity? So I'll, I'll take uh, this one. So uh, internally, uh, Fastenal has invested in something called the Blue Belt Program, very similar to other industry recognized accreditation, such as a Black Belt, or in other uh, production uh, offerings, there's something called a Green Belt. Uh, however, that's an internal resource that we train our empo employees and folks with. However, whenever you bring one of our lean solutions employees into your business and you ask us to walk alongside you with one of these things, most times, more often than not, you're going to find the supply chain impacts everything inside of your business. And I quite literally mean everything. And so what we do is we will focus on your business from a supply chain standpoint. However, in looking in production or looking in uh, maybe accounting or things like that, where we aren't really well equipped or that's not really our expertise, we're going to be trusting our customers to bring somebody into that process. So we're all for collaboration with our customers in regards to these events, as long as we can focus on the supply chain portion of their business and making sure that we're, we're providing expertise where we are the experts. I like that. Okay. Um, this next one is asking, uh, which of the deadly wastes do you encounter the most often? And what, which of the most deadly wastes do you encounter the most often that fast and all can affect? I would say, I'm not going to go too far into it, but I, I feel like uh, inventory in motion, which Alicia and I each spoke sense. on, um, just from some of the solutions that we offer and that we have in our, our tool bag, th that most of our solutions hit home, or programs hit home on those two very specifically most of the time. So um, that's from what I've seen from my experience, but I'll ask Nick and Alicia what, what they typically see. I, I definitely agree, Luke. When you look at non-value add activities, um, and a lot of the processes that we deal with um, with our, our current um, you know, partners, the, the motion, the inventory, those are going to be two big pieces that are not only time consuming, but also really costly that we've found out. Mm -hmm. For sure. And uh, Luke, you brought up a good point with the process mapping of, you know, uh, I do A, then I do B, then I do C. And a lot of times when we do that with the customers, we uncover a lot of extra processing inside of their business processes. What we mean by that is, there's transactions or actions that are happening that aren't necessary for the action to be complete. Uh, and so with it, we're able to mitigate waste. That could be time and actually getting the product ordered for our customers, or it could be even, you know, the employees getting back to their work and, and what they're being paid to do as compared to what the business needs them to do. That's not adding value to the end, end product or their consumer. Okay. Uh, got another one here. Uh, is Lean Solutions integrated into FAST360? If yes, at what level for customer visibility? So, so, go so ahead, Nick. yeah, yeah. So, FAST360 FAST is an online uh, 
online reporting platform. And so with that, uh, you know, you can't request a lean solutions uh, specialist or expert to come in through your FAST 360 portal. That's where you would uh, get involved with your local FAST model representative. However, uh, some of the cost savings metrics that we show our customers are directly tied to the activities that we're driving in the business, the TCOAs, the waste walks, uh, the 5Y analyses. Uh, those are all leading into our cost savings platform and the value that we're providing our customers by partnering with us. Because again, the value that we're able to provide is eliminating that waste inside the supply chain to make them overall more effective uh, at their job. Yeah, I'll piggyback off that and say a lot of the opportunities we get involved in, um, Fast and All may not have that business today. Thus, there is no Fast 360 platform or anything like that. So one of the goals of the exercise, hopefully of why we're being brought in, is to set up a program where we can offer solutions like Fast360 and data analytics around point of use, inventory, point of use usage, those type of things, and, and take that customer from you know a, a, a C to an A or, or whatever that looks like in their supply chain. And ultimately, that's a tool in our bag that we like to, to implement and, and share with the customer. But ultimately, if there is already fast and all business and there is already fast 360 included, if you as a customer are utilizing that, you're already one step ahead of your competition. And I can promise you that. So if you're already dialed in to that and, and there is an opportunity for lean uh, solutions or fast and all to come in and take a look at another piece of the business, you are going to be way more equipped and way more prepared to, to start this lean journey than anyone else is. I've got at least two more here for you guys. I missed one uh, before that says, are there use cases for healthcare, either hospitals, urgent care, something of the like? And so to that question, I would say anywhere that there's a repetitive product process or an employee retrieving product, lean practices uh, do apply to that scenario. So an instance that I would have inside of a hospital setting, I know I've done it, I helped with the TCOA actually with local health network, was that, you know, think of the consumables that a, a hospital goes through on a re regular basis, gloves, masks, sometimes glasses, syringes, things like that. Those are all different materials and products that their doctors and their nurses are going to retrieve on a daily basis and then making requisitions for and so what we're able to do is show them what does it look like to have an automated reordering system just there to count the inventory as it's taken out of place and then have somebody come and replenish it automatically to, again, remove that extra process. So really, uh, I think the healthcare industry and, and many others like it have a lot of room for improvements when it comes to those repetitive actions and products that are found within the supply chain. I like that, and I even uh, have something better. I can take the next question. So the next question says, uh, will you share the presentation or link to the presentation? Yes, we will actually. Uh, not right here, not right now, but obviously when the recording is done, uh, there'll be an email coming out. It'll have uh, some of the things that we talked about here. There'll be a breakdown of the five whys. There'll be a link to the recording so that you can listen to us at 2x speed and laugh. Um, if you are listening at 2x, does that mean that because I just said it, it's 4x? I don't know. That's not my thing. But we've got real questions now uh, for you guys, not just for me. Um, are there 6s or Sigma programs that customers can engage in themselves outside of Fast and All that is, is something that you'd recommend? Yeah, 6s is a industry-wide terminology and process. So absolutely, we can help customers get started on their own journey by identifying maybe what that scope is, the steps that make up that scope and provide uh, value through products, time, resources, any of that. Absolutely. But at the same time, um, nothing says, you know, just like Nick talked about the five whys and asking, you know, identifying a problem and going through that series of questions. There's nothing that says you can't go out and start looking at these areas or problem areas in developing a systematic, clean way of organizing and presenting material um, and, and those processes that are behind the scenes in your facility today. I would I say we, too that uh, Fastenal does not own the Lean Six Sigma Black Belt certification. That is a organization all in itself. 
that's why we kind of spun off and not that we moved away from the principles of the Lean Six Sigma Black Belt, but we made it more honed in on what were our expertise was with the supply chains. That's where we made the Blue Belt uh, certification internally. And so businesses across the board have been doing this as well. And uh, that Lean Six Sigma Black Belt uh, organization is very good as a reference point to making sure that you're staying on track with the foundational principles uh, of that certification and what that can do for your business. So we are down to our last question here. Uh, once waste has been identified within a customer's current state, what is the best way to present these findings to them? I'm assuming a, little, a party, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, we should give this. <laughs> um, as far as presenting um, the, the cost savings, is that what we're talking about? Sorry, Kurt, just to confirm. Yeah, so you know our, our TCO analysis is typically where we uncover a lot of those cost savings, a lot of those uh, opportunities for process improvements. Um, and that's where Fastenal wants to, to show you our value. It wants to show you that best solution, that best way to improve the process, um, gathering that data with you and really selecting a solution that's appropriate for you. Um, and the TCOA analysis um, is, is where we best do that. And to summarize that point, Kurt, if we can put a dollar value or a savings number associated with the elimination or, or the removal of those non-value activity steps within the process, that's really what's going to to uh, shine in the customer's eyes is, OK, if we did go forward with this program in the future state, what's that impact on my bottom line? And that's what we're able to do as lean consultants within Fastenal is put a dollar value on that and be able to show that to the customers of what they could expect from a future state program with Fastenal. That was everything we know in a nutshell. If anybody wants more, like I said before, find us on LinkedIn, uh, reach out to us however you can, and we'll be in touch. Look for the email with the recording and the digital swag um, on the five whys. Guys, did we leave anything else off or are we done here? No, I think we're good. We appreciate the time. Okay, wrap. thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Thanks everyone.